Hello, this is the Iwi 5000 from Mackay. Iwi stands for Electronic Wind Instrument. It's basically a flute, a clarinet, uh, lots of different wind instrument things that you can play on this. Now I had the 4000 quite a while back and when the 5000 came out I thought oh brilliant this got three gigabytes of sampled sounds and things in it must be good. Big mistake. I really wish I hadn't have bought this. I really wish I'd have kept the 4000 because this has a common problem and that is the battery. Now the problem with this is it uses a 16650 rechargeable lithium ion battery and that's not really a standard size battery. Uh, if you don't keep this charged uh, and you store it away and the battery falls below a certain level of say 2.7 volts the thing will not charge up at all no matter what. I've been on the website and uh, there's lots and lots of people having this problem pages of people and uh, you know, they've tried all sorts and Akai themselves have said oh if it doesn't charge then try using an iPad charger etc etc I've even tried that there's the iPad charger I've had this on charge all night and all that happens is this little 88 or rather BB for bad battery is just flashing away the worst thing is I can't even use it on its own power supply if the battery has uh, failed the entire instrument is useless so I'm going to uh, try and have a look into this and see if I can find a way around of uh, giving the battery a little bit of charge in by some other means uh, just to see if I can get the battery above that level to try and trick this into charging the battery because the problem is it just won't do anything and it's a little bit annoying because these are very expensive instruments and there's just so many people out there who have got this problem so I'm going to try and help you out and uh, try and get this one working now one of the good things about this Akai is it comes with a receiver so it's wireless you can play it and the audio is actually transmitted so on stage that's quite handy although I prefer to use this with the MIDI instead and unfortunately you can't transmit the MIDI anyway here is the battery uh, get that thing out you see this is quite awkward especially as Akai says oh take the battery out if you're not using it for a while and it comes with a very tiny little plug down there and it's a little bit difficult even to get the plug in and they also say if the BB's flashing make sure the connector is on the right way around well it's actually impossible to put the connector on the wrong way around anyway so I don't know why they've written that on their website but anyway here goes this is the 16650 lithium ion battery pack now the problem here which is a little bit annoying is let me just find one uh, there we go now this is a 18650 battery and these oh you can buy these all over the place these are quite common nowadays and if you see it won't fit in the hole just for the sake of a couple of millimeters if there was a couple of millimeters difference there they could have used a standard 18650 battery and people could have just bought one of those but instead if you go on the Akai website this replacement battery is $49 and I think well that's a little bit crazy but anyway uh, the problem is now okay so I've taken the battery out I've still got it powered up here but it's still it doesn't work it's got to have the battery in to work it won't even work on its own charger when the battery is taken out and I don't understand the logic behind that but you know they've done it for a reason I'm not too sure why but anyway so I'll test this battery and see what sort of uh, voltage is actually on this I know the battery isn't under load but uh, you can get a general idea of the sort of voltage that's in there so there you go we've got 2.7 volts just 2.699 2.7 volts now because of that this won't even charge the battery up 
it decides, no, the battery's faulty. I'm not even going to attempt to charge that up, which I think is a little bit ridiculous. But anyway, enough of what I think about that. I'm going to peel this apart and see what I can do with it. Let's have a look underneath here. Now these have a bit of circuitry under here, which stops you overcharging it. So inside the battery, there's a little circuit board on here, and that is like a, a bit of a charge controller. And you normally get these inside this type of battery to stop you blowing them up. Uh, there's three wires on here, and normally the third wire is either a temperature, it's connected to a temperature sensor, or some batteries have a sort of communications that goes along that line. So what I'm going to try and do here is uh, I'll find out which side's positive first. Uh, if I just go onto the battery here. All right. OK, so this side's positive, that side's negative. Uh, and then I'm going to connect a couple of wires to this and try and charge it up. This is just standard bell wire. It's single stranded, it's thick, and it'll sit inside this little plug just nicely. So if I just put the uh, the wire inside the plug, there you go, the black line's on the negative. Now I'm just going to test these two wires again, make sure everything's correct and the power is running the correct way so if I go there and there yeah now I must stress what I'm about to do is dangerous so I'm completely saying don't try this at home I'm going to use some uh, protective glasses because lithium-ion batteries can explode and uh, I'm also going to put it all on a tray so that if the thing starts smoking or it does explode then I can run out into the garden and throw it outside. I've also got a fire extinguisher in here as well just in case but please don't try this at home I mean it. There we go a nice sparkly tile and this is flame proof so if this catches fire, I can just grab the tile and throw the thing outside. And there's my protective glasses in case the thing explodes. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to line up three pencil batteries. And three pencil batteries adds up to one, two, three, four and a half volts. But they're rechargeable. So rechargeables are only 1.2 volts. So that should be about 3.6 volts. Let me just check that on here, see if I've got enough charge in here. Uh, put it that way around. Well, 3.5 volts. That's fine. Now what I'm going to do is just sort of keep connecting this just for a short time to this battery and hope that some of the power is transferred across there. I only need to get that above 2.7 volts apparently to get the uh, Akai wind synth to start charging my wires just come out one moment I'll try and put that back in again these things happen make sure that's incorrect actually I'm going to pull these wires apart all right so I put the black one in there And put the positive on that side. Right, Let's try again. Obviously, the easiest thing would be to take that battery off its little uh, circuit board, its little charge protection thing there, and use a proper lithium ion charger and charge it up. But I don't have one, so. I'm just sort of doing it the Heath Robinson style. OK, 
keeping an eye on the battery all the time making sure it doesn't start to expand or vent any gases because if it does I'm going to run into the garden with it just do this a few more times All right, let's check what's happening now the wires the right way around that would help wouldn't it three volts right on the meter it says three volts now this is where I've got to be quick because that now says three volts so that might be enough to trick this circuitry into saying yes this is a good battery please charge it up so I'll just put that little bit of protective tape over there move those to one side put this back into the iwi just gonna plug it for the minute uh, right let's see what's gonna happen now the, even the plugs for these things are bloody ridiculous right let's see what's gonna happen right now then we have a little flashing light there and that means the Iwi is charging its battery. So I'm going to go away for half an hour, leave that to charge, come back and I'll test it and see if it works. So I've given this actually two hours of charging now. The 8.8 hasn't come up on the display and the little LEDs flashing away. So hopefully there'll be enough charge in this thing now to try it out so I need to disconnect that and drop the battery into place uh, and see if this thing is going to actually switch on let me just close this up Judging by that little red LED there, I think this thing already is switched on. Now, if you press the level button down and then the effects on the left, there's the 80, 86. So between 0 and 100 or 0 and 99, that's your battery level. So it's up to 86%. So uh, hopefully this thing is going to work now. Let me just switch off and then switch on. Right, that's closed down. Uh, plug in the radio receiver and see if this is all going to work correctly and if it does I've just saved myself $49 in having to buy a new one so Plug that in. And switch on. Turn the wireless on. And that's on also. And I'll just switch the camera around so you can see. Right. Don't expect anything fantastic because I'm not the greatest musician. Right. Uh, okay, let's see if it makes a noise. Yes. Everything seems to be working okay. Now the problem, because this is sample based as well, if you change from one instrument to another, you've actually got to wait a short time for the sample to load into its memory so sometimes if you jump quickly from one instrument you've got to expect uh, it's going to take a little bit of time before it makes a noise again when I say a little bit of time I only mean sort of a split second or so but uh, you kind of get used to that it has its flaws but it sounds okay See this, uh, some sound there, there's always little clicks and tiny 
bits of things that are going off all the time, which is rather irritating. I really wish I hadn't got rid of the Iwi 4000, but I've made the mistake now, so I'm going to have to just stick with this. Right. Let's try again. Sorry, I'm rambling on a bit now. The whole point is, the thing works. So. Did you hear there? How it goes, bit, bit, bit. It's because it's still loading its sample. It's, I think they should have spent a little bit more time before they release this. But anyway, it's working. Uh, the only thing I've got to remember now is when I'm not using it, take the battery out and put it on the shelf. I really think instead of having a soft start button, button on here, a soft on off button like you have on a TV set, uh, they could have just put an actual proper switch on there that would physically disconnect the battery. They've got one on the uh, wireless transmitter, a proper physical switch, but on the power button it isn't. It's one of those that you just press and hold for a little bit. So if you've got one of these and you're not going to use it for a while, take the battery out. Anyway, uh, I hope that's been useful for some of you guys out there who have had that 88 problem with your eWees. And uh, like I say, don't try this at home. If you go and blow yourselves up, I'm sorry, that's your fault. But uh, anyway, I sorted mine out for now. Thanks very much for watching and uh, all the best. If anybody wants to swap their EWE 4000 for an EWE 5000, please get in touch. Although you'd be mad to. Thanks very much for watching. All the best. Bye bye.